<laughs> well, we were just talking, and of course, we didn't have the recorder on, everybody. We were just visiting and laughing, <laughs> trying to figure out how to keep track of time. And so today's date is, uh, oh, look, look over here, uh, the 20th of April, 2012. And now, there will be a header here, but it's kind of nice to get a reference point. Um, I had a client yesterday call me, and this is what we're going to discuss. And uh, we ended up talking off and on for an hour or more. And the situation was that she moved, ha had met a man before the first of the year. Uh, in February, they moved in together. Uh, he did not have a car. She drove him to work. He took her to work. It was kind of like a trade back and forth. Uh, they ate their meals together. They slept together. She had a son that got very connected to him. They did share that they had woundology. And woundology is what sometimes brings people together. So the common woundology is that she had a mother that abandoned, abandoned her, the family when she was young. And then he also had the same situation, but another parent. It's a long story. Mother, father, marriage, divorce. It was always an abandonment issue. So they pledged themselves underneath the stars that they would always be faithful. They would never um, abandon each other. They would never cause each other strife. So the conversation got a little more serious, and they realized how much they love each other. And, yeah, the relationship after four months was going pretty fast, but that's life. It, when you people are in your 30s, then you have to move faster. Anyway, so uh, the 12th, which was a week ago Thursday, um, she made arrangements. To, okay, tomorrow, Friday, you're going to take me to work so you can have the car. And then after work, you pick me up. So he took her to work. And she worked all day. She went out to see where he was. Her car was there. She got in. And on the seat was the keys. And in the cup holder was his water. And it wasn't even half empty. It was on half empty. So she wondered if he was around. She waited a while, didn't see him. So she drove home, made dinner, and he never showed up. So she called me Wednesday, frantic. He never went to work. The family... His family, his brother, who he's close to, never heard from him all week. Uh, he didn't touch base with the, her son, who he uh, claims to love. He didn't touch base with her. So she went to work every day, came home every day. He never called. He never answered. Uh, he had lost his phone, so she couldn't call him. Uh, he did not answer emails. Um, it, at the house was his new bank card and his um, going across the border, um, what's that called? Um, visa. So yeah. all his positions were in the house. So I said to her, maybe you ought to do a missing person. And here in Arizona, I don't know where it is there elsewhere. I watch Nancy Grace and all the shows, and there's always a missing person report. So why wouldn't I think that? after we? So she called the police station, called me back. She says, in Air here, I don't know about every state, over 18, if you live together even, if he disappears, you can't put a missing report because he's over 18, he's an adult. So she called me up and frankly, she says, is he with another woman? Is he dead? Is he in Mexico with a drug cartel? And actually, it was, it was blocked to me. And what that told me, I could read him, but I couldn't see him. And I thought to myself, oh, boy, am I thinking he's drugged? Drugged? Yeah. Am I thinking he's uh, crashed into, yeah. um, we have lots and lots of desert out here. He could have died. I couldn't tell death. And in defense of Sylvia Brown on TV, uh, when she made that claim that this boy was dead, you got to remember anybody who's trapped, uh, hijacked, um, kidnapped, uh, a wreckage, then you're you feel dead because you're not free. That's so right. he right. could have been trapped. He could be drugged. He could have been in an accident, and that wall would still be blank to me, be nothing there for me to see. So we then went to a place of saying, okay, what if he's okay? He's not with a woman. He wanted, she wanted to know. I said, why are you going there? You don't know nothing. Until you know something, you know nothing. So don't try laying in bed all night long crying. What did I do wrong? What is he doing? Because you don't know. Until you know, you don't know. So if you possibly blank your mind out. So where I'm going with this, this is what I want to talk to John about today. Thank you for allowing me to have the first five yeah, minutes. Oh, no, sorry, yeah. Is that... How do we uh, how do we deal with abandonment if someone disappears and doesn't call you within a week or so? If the person doesn't call you in two weeks, what are you going to assume? What if the person doesn't call you a month? All of a sudden they show up at the front door. They all of a sudden call you and say, how are you doing? How, how are you going to respond? And I said to this woman, what is your deal breaker? What is the thing that will break you up in a relationship? She says, if you're in abandonment. I says, what did this man do to you? Feel abandonment. I said, okay, we don't know if he's in hearts or dead or whatever. But when you do hear from him, and I did see that, I says, you need to have that conversation. If it's not satisfactory, if he's not been in the hospital, if he wasn't in a wreck, 
What is his good enough excuse? Well, sure. guess what? He came in last night, and she wrote me a wonderful letter. She says, this is a deal breaker. You abandoned me. We proclaimed our love for each other. You didn't go to work. He didn't go to work? Hello? Where's his income? Uh, he didn't have a bank card. He was at a friend's house, and they drank and watched movies all week because he got overwhelmed with life. Remember, he has mental issues. She declared he was too emotionally unhealthy for her. So I'm going to give everybody <laughs> it's really John's turn now because I know he's had clients like this and what I want to share with you tonight or today is is your emotional stableness in the middle of crisis and the verge of a relationship where there's abandonment like how do you deal being abandoned how do you deal with not getting a call how do you deal with uh, seeing somebody drive around town you think they're coming to your house and they don't your turn <laughs> yeah well, I mean no uh, Nancy I mean I've been finding as well that over the, the time uh, and so it's funny you talk about this really because I've had a lot of clients over the past week actually that have been so consumed with when when is my partner going to come back um, you know is, is, is are they still in love with me do they still care about me do they still want to be with me are they in love with anybody else you know and I, I try and explain to them that that really you know, the, the issue really is with yourself, not with them. And it's all about learning to live, having that feeling and having that confidence to live as a singular person, first and foremost, and being able to cope on your own. And then if, if the, that abandonment comes, you're not going to automatically assume that it's my fault or it's something that I've done or you know, he's gone off with someone else or he's in love with someone else or it's another partner or something like that. Because, like, as you say, when he's dealing with other people, uh, you do sometimes, I mean, I get lots of people asking me, you know, oh, how do so-and-so feel about me? Or, you know, are they injured? Where are they? Are they going to contact me? And like you say, Nancy, sometimes you do get that block where mm -hmm. you just cannot pick up the other person's feelings and you just cannot sort of see what the other person is mm -hmm. but I, I try to instill in people that really you know look at the bigger picture here you know if this person is doing this really you, you it's when they come back you must make sure that you get the correct balance right within the relationship because otherwise it, Trust. Will, it will continue to happen again you know so this is just like a you know, when it happens to people, I think this is just like a tip of the iceberg. And like you said, it is a, the deal breaker. You know, when they come back, I try to say to people, they will come back and there will be communication. But there has to be that concrete evidence of why have they done it in the first place? Is it going to happen again? And do, do ultimately, do you want to have a repeat performance of this? And, and now that's a good point. Are you talking about um, a power play on their part by abandoning or uh, disappearing? Was this, man, and I don't know, was this man actually pretending, actually in Setna's mind that he was going to be gone a week to see her reaction? That's right. It's that's like, right. how much power and control can he get away with this? That, that's and, right. And uh, I have actually seen that happen. My clients have brought that to me. Yeah. Uh, well, it's I'll very painful. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Nancy. And I think sometimes I think it is definitely a form of control on the other person's part. That it's a way of them controlling the situation and controlling other people's feelings. Which, to me, I, I don't say. I think, I think, I think everybody needs to have a certain amount of control within the life. But when it comes to complete control, when somebody is completely controlling the environment then I just think that's wrong because it's wrong for them to do that and it's wrong for them to put that control on somebody else as well um, because it I think mm -hmm. it's it's totally wrong for them to do that but I think because as human beings we 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 get so wrapped up in the fact that is it something that I've done is it something that I've caused is it my yeah. fault you know is it you know have I sort of done something to cause this person to do this you know, or is it, you know, have they been murdered? Have they, have they, you know, sort of been shot? Have they had an accident? And, you know, but again, it's well, this all, happened with this woman. She had all those thoughts. That's, yeah, that, that's it. That's it. That's and, wrong. It, it is. It is. It's absolutely wrong. And it's awful when you're in a position like that, when it yeah. happens, because it, it throws you into this complete and utter uncontrolled. You can't control what's happening with you. Um, and I try and sort of, 
I mean, from my perspective, when, when, when I do have clients, that, that, and I've had a lot actually over the last few weeks, whether there's something going on in the air, I don't know, but I've had a lot of people <laughs> come. You know, What's up there? <laughs> that's it, yeah. I've had a lot of people come with a similar sort of problem to this, you know, and you just, you just have to try and instill in them, look, you know, we, you've got to get to the base issue here. What is actually the problem? What is actually the cause? You know, because really you need people need to look at the bigger picture of what's going on i think and i always feel that when anything goes wrong certainly when it's abandonment i think you have to look at the bigger picture and do you want this to happen again and if if you don't want it to happen again what can we do to sort that out and what can we put in place that it doesn't happen again um because it is a, it's an awful feeling it's an awful feeling well i think we we want to be blind i think we want we don't want to watch for those red flags and everybody that's fallen in love and you have Absolutely. those urges of being with somebody and you want them, sometimes I think we bend over and become blind to the real issues that, that they're yeah. having and experiencing. Absolutely. I mean, not anybody on the planet hasn't got some kind of woundology, but it's your choice to live with it and have it govern you. Everybody knows I lost my father when I was six. I mean, I have huge numbers of woundology issues that I could play into and own and let it cripple me. I chose not to. So I think on some level, we're talking passive aggressive control over the partner, yeah. which happened here. I think that she, being a woman, we women have to see do it more. We will be more blinded because we want the man in our life. He may see her as too powering, controlling, and he wants to step away and make sure she knows her boundaries with him because he wants to be a free man in a relationship. You better start watching those red flags, everybody, because break it easily and early by saying, you know, I think we're just not quite compatible. Maybe hard to do it, but... It, Better than give somebody a year, two years, three years of your life. Go absolutely, ahead and end it no, here. Absolutely, Nancy. Absolutely, and you know, I mean, like, I mean, I've been in situations myself where, you know, you, you know, you don't want that person to leave, and you, you feel mm -hmm. utterly help. You, you do feel helpless. You know, you really yes. do feel absolutely helpless. But then, like you say, Nancy, it's a case of identifying with that and thinking, well, hang on a minute. Is it the fact, really, that the pair of us perhaps are not compatible and we could be better yeah. off in other situations with other people, you know? Right. And we, we, we could be leading a, health, a much, much healthier life than... Because I think, I think, I think once, yeah. you have that, once you have that feeling or once that abandonment, you, you've experienced that abandonment, I think it always stays with you and I think it's always at the back of your head, is it going to happen again? Is that... You're yeah, you know, and is that going to happen again? And is it, what am I going to do if it happens again? And then that creates a whole new environment. There's so many topics here we could go into. I call it the short, I call this, that situation you brought up, the short lease, leash situation. When you're so afraid, then that I trust you is 12 feet long leash between the two of you. And the more you worry about the abandonment, the more you worry about things, you get that leash and you tighten up around your, around your partner's neck tighter and tighter. And then it's only six inches and that person breaks away and you start all over again. That, that's it. That's, that, that's exactly right. I really, I really enjoyed this. That's it. Okay. Right. Hope, we, hope we gave you some information. This is a quick one. Yeah. And I'm learning how to do YouTube. And so this, this one needs to be 50 minutes, everybody. If we do number two, just click on and look at the next video. Otherwise, we'll see you in a couple of days. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, if you did want to feel, um, get to know us more, don't forget, it's www.nancymats.com. And also, you can read about me as www.orbsuk.uk. Okay, but thanks, everybody. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.